Imagine it's Western Canada, and it's about, uh, I don't know, 1750 or something like this, or 1800, a couple of hundred years ago. Um, a party of native Canadians have uh, settled temporarily in a place on the prairie, in uh, a fork in the river. It seems like a nice place to settle in the little intermittent times that they have when they're not following the bison everywhere. And so they set up a little settlement for a while. They think they're going to stay here for maybe the winter or something like this. And uh, so they set up a little settlement. You know, they build their their um, dwellings and, you know, the temporary dwellings. And they, you know, set up a little mini community the way nomads will. And along comes a European guy. And he says, what, what, what are you doing here? This, you know, what, justify yourself here. And the native people are sort of, what is he talking about? You know, what do you mean justify yourself? We're, we're just, we've just wandered over here and we've set up a camp. What do you, what do you mean? You know, and the European guy says, well, you don't have the right to be here. This is my land. And the native Canadians are going, well, what is he talking about? His land. I, I, I don't understand what he means. Um, well, he says, yeah, I, this is my land. I have the right to dispose of this land as I see fit. And, you know, the European guy isn't trying to pull a fast one here. By his own reckoning, he has the right to do this, and these native Canadians are trespassing on his property. So, you know, this sort of confusion leads to something of a debate, and, you know, the let's just say that both sides are acting in reasonable goodwill, and they want to sort of try to accommodate the other side. So the native Canadians say, okay, what, what do you mean by what but you have the right to say this now because this is a well-known spot in the sort of mythology of our people and you know every every little sort of nation of native canadians people like us not like you but people like us has sort of understood that this is a spot where if you know people will camp if they see fit and suddenly after thousands of years of just us not even thinking of this you, you're asking me that you're asking me the where I get the right to do this. Where do I get the right to settle here? Where do we get the right to be here? What are you what are you talking about? I don't understand. And he says, well, the European goes, well, look at it. Think of this. I have established that I'm here and I'm justified to be here, and I have the right to tell you that you're trespassing. And so the native Canadians would go, okay, I understand what you're saying, but what I don't understand is where did your right to tell us that? we're trespassing come from? Well, it came from the, the government in Ottawa, of course, or maybe in London, England, or maybe in Paris, I don't know. Um, and, and, you know, the native Canadians just go, where's Ottawa? Where's Paris? What are you talking about? Well, you know, the government, you know, they, they grant deeds to say that we have property. And, you know, the same way that, say, that's your spear over there, or that's, you know, your horse, it doesn't belong to somebody else. Oh, I get that, yeah, but land, you can't do that. Well, yes, we can. We do it all the time. It makes perfect sense. And the native Canadians have no answer to this. They say, okay, why don't you show me that you have this authority? Okay, so the European guy goes back to his house, and he comes back, and he's got a deed all signed and official looking. And to see... And this, the people who actually issue these deeds are empowered to do this. From the laws of our la uh, of, of our society, we, they've had that authority. The courts or whatever, the officials of our society have had that power since time immemorial. So we've recognized these people as legitimate. They have the right to tell m us what we can and can't do, what we you know what's ours and what isn't. Well, let's see your deed. Well, we don't have a deed. Ah, well, there you go, eh? I have the right, you don't. Get off my land. And we all know what happens historically in cases like that. The native Canadians just go, well, never mind. I'm not going to do as you say because of a stupid piece of paper. Um, and next season, of course, there's a squadron of scarlet-clad soldiers there to, you know, say, uh, yes, native Canadians, get off his land or we will kill you. <laughs> uh, and that's what it inevitably devolved to when there were disputes of this kind between European civilization and the native Canadians. Now, <clears throat> what happened there? Well, the native Canadians had never thought that they needed to justify their occupation of a piece of land. It had never dawned on them. Suddenly, a new set of um, rules had come into play and 
they've been asked to justify their occupation of this piece of land. Now, what happened here? And what ultimately decided the question? It was just brute force, right? Uh, there was a dispute as to the legitimacy of certain documentation, so it devolves now to who is the stronger. Um, some, you know, a, a wag might say, well, that's just, the, they, they knew that from the very beginning. The European guy knew that he had the entire force of European civilization behind him, and he was just going to eject these pesky natives off the land. And that was the end of it. They can put up their puny uh, uh, objections all that they want, but at the end of the day, I have the armed might of the British Empire behind me, or the French Empire. And there's nothing these native people can do, and I can sort of... And, and besides, I don't have time to quibble with you people. I've got a crop to bring in. So I'm, I'm not fooling around here. We've, deci we've decided that there's a dispute. We're going to try and settle this in a civilized manner. So, you know, I'll take you to court. Let's go and plead... Okay, get somebody from your side, native Canadians, and we'll go to court and plead our case in front of the local magistrate. Well, no, no, they say the... Say the uh, the Native Canadians, no, no, I don't want to do that. Let's go plead it in front of the elders, the, the elders of my nation. And the European goes, no way, I'm not going to do that because it's a foregone conclusion. Well, yeah, we do know that it's a foregone conclusion depending on who's sitting on the jury. <laughs> you know, depending on who's actually deciding, you know, who, who gets to make the decision. I would have assumed that the only way to really decide the matter was a third-party arbitrator that both sides had agreed upon. But, you know, why would the European guy submit to that? He's got superior firepower. Um, when we're talking about justice and rights, what are we really talking about? If you have the right to do something, what does that mean? The right before whom? You, it means that you, you can justify your actions before somebody else. Who is that somebody else? I would just say it's the larger society. That's it. Um, and if there is a dispute, it boils down to force majeure. It, it boils down to who has more brute force to bring to bear on the other side. Um, some people might say that the whole thing was a charade from this from the beginning. That you know there was never a question of justice. There was never a question of human rights. There was never a question of anything. It was just our ability to impose force upon you that was going to decide the matter. And I think that the historical facts of the European occupation of Western Canada bear this out. <laughs> the Europeans had superior force and they exercised it, and that's why I'm living here. Not nice, is it? But, well, that's the way it is. Um, <clears throat> and, really, at the end of the day, how are we going to argue against that? Who gets to decide who has the right to do what? Um, and what does that say about our entire idea of rights? Um, let's, you know, if I say, what gives you the right to do X? Um, or somebody asks me that. Somebody says, what gives you the right to, I don't know, um, park your car over there? I said, I, I, I didn't ask for anybody's right. I just parked my car. Well, you violated, you know, you, you don't have the right to do that. Says who? Well, it says City Hall. Same thing, you know, and, and we will bring force to bear against you for having done that. That's kind of, you know, it's just we assume that there is somebody out there who is empowered to ask people whether or not they have the right to do something. Or we believe that there is an absolute right to be established. That we do believe that, that there is some sort of way in which you can demonstrate that you have the right to do something. But demonstrate it before whom? How could the Native Canadians have extricated themselves from that nasty dilemma that they found themselves in one morning on the western prairies in Canada? How could they have said, what do you mean, what, what right do we have to settle here? We've always done this. What are you talking about? You, you don't even need a right to do that. And the European guy says, oh, yes, you do. And so, the, again, where do I get that right, say the Native Canadians? And, well, guess where you get it? You get it among us, us other Europeans. And, well, it's pretty obvious the Native Canadians would say, isn't that convenient for you? Oh, well, I guess we've been beaten, haven't we? Um, so it's it's a tricky thing, this business of rights. Um because I don't, when you get right down to it, I don't really see how a right is any different from permission from the larger society or permission from whoever is, happens to be stronger than the other one. Um, it, again, I don't think we want to see our rights that way, but I believe that they, that's ultimately what they are. We're just saying that you have permission. That's what rights, if, if you're 
if I'm saying I have the right to do this, what I'm basically saying is I have some sort of legitimacy here. I have some sort of permission. I have some sort of deed saying I can do this, even if it's unofficial, even if it's understood. Your right to do whatever is implied. Now, let's take that one step further. Do I have the right to exist? Can I demonstrate that I have the right to be alive? Um, or did, can anyone do that? I don't think so. Okay, does that give anyone the right to kill me? I don't think so either. Um, it's just a question of who is asking the, uh, the question of what right do I have and in what context. Are you asking me for justification? Yes, I'm asking you to justify your own existence. I'm asking you to justify breathing right now. Who gave you the right to that air? Now, I know that that sounds crazy, but again, it, it's the same kind of question, isn't it? Until you can demonstrate that you have the right to do something, you can't do it. That's kind of the way that our thinking goes, right? You know, that, that silly little aphorism, your right to swing your fist ends at my nose. It does? Okay, where does it begin? Where, where, where did I even get the right to swing my fist in the first place? And, you know, I can say, okay, demonstrate to me that you have the right to swing your fist, even without hitting my nose. <laughs> you can't do that. And again, that's implicit in every last question. What gives you the right? What gives, again, implicit in that is that I somehow, there is a requirement for me to have the right to do something before I do it. No, there isn't. <laughs> There's no such thing. A right is a concept. It's whatever we decide it is. I would say that it's really more just of a tiebreaker. It's between two people in a dispute who has more right than the other one. It's not a question of who is absolutely in the right. Um, and that's the interesting thing about, again, uh, the question, what gives you the right to breed? E implicit in that question is the idea that that's a legitimate question, that it is legitimate to ask people to demonstrate that they have the right to do something, and without that right, they don't have the right to do something. Who said that I need the right to do anything ever? And again, you see where, where this kind of question leads. What gives you the right? Okay, what what gives anybody the right to ever do anything? Again, Benatar or anybody who's asking what gives you the right to breed, you are asking a question that's that fundamental. Now, it's interesting that Benatar would do this, being a white South African, what gives you the right, which is kind of the same thing as what gave my ancestors the right to come here in Canada, would have benefited him, so he's got every interest in saying what gives you the right to, you know, Kosa people or Zulu people or Matabele people, I have a deed here from Cape Town or from uh, London, England or Amsterdam or whatever saying this is my land, get off. You know, and, and again, I would assume that that's probably where, you know, the original idea of negative uh, uh, application of a rights culture comes from. In the absence of your demonstration of a right to do something, you don't have the right or to the right to own something, you don't have that right. Um, you know, and suddenly uh, there's a wonderful little trick has been played on everybody and uh, their land, or even if it wasn't their land, doesn't belong to them anymore through some weird quibble that they don't understand. We couldn't demonstrate that we had the right to do it. He could. All right, I don't understand how all this works, but the upshot of it is there's armed men now kicking me off this land that I've lived on for centuries. Um, tricky business asking people to justify their actions, and... I won't say that it's a slippery slope, but there's an awful lot of unintended consequences there. Um, in the absence of my ability to demonstrate the right to do something, does that mean that I can't do it? Or in the absence of my ability to prove that I have um, an established legitimacy in what I'm doing, I can't do it? Where does legitimacy come from? Who decides what's legitimate? Who decides what rights I have and what I don't have? These are just assumptions. What gives you the right isn't just a question asking for someone to give me the right. Implicit in that is that there is such a thing as a right out there and that I need it in order to do something. Benatar is rather dangerously menacing that entire idea. And as I said, I said yesterday that in a way he's sort of attacking the glue that holds our entire civilization together. And I think that that's how he's doing it. He's pushing rights to an absurd length. Do I have the right to be what I do? I do I require a right to be what I am? 
well, I, if I can't demonstrate that I have that right, do I actually have that right? <laughs> Think about that. <laughs>